lot of balance. So sometimes you look and you see those low kills overall from different players and think, oh, they're just not a team that gets a lot of kills, when in reality, they do a pretty good job with set distribution. Sophia Lambros to start with service. Long first pass for Wake Forest. Eagles get control, and the block is out of bounds. So BC begins one to nothing in set number one. I like this rotation that Wake Forest is starting in with Kylie Adams pulled up from the back row to set, giving them three options. Lambros goes to the back row. There it is, up and in, point Wake Forest. Ashley Slater with the kill. And we're gonna see a lot more from her. She provides such great balance on the net for the Deacons by being such a strong hitter on that right side. Service now to Wake Forest. Clean look for Boston College. Emma Farrell digs it up. Back row attack goes way long for BC. Point Wake Forest. I do like that BC is trying to establish the middle early on. They set the middle and then the next play, they set the back row player to kind of do a little bit of smoke and mirrors, but not quite there. Emma Farrell again on the service. High first couple of passes. BC can't get it over, and it went into the net. So, too many touches for the Eagles. Wake Forest with a 3-1 to one lead here in set number one. Farrell again. Clean serve, or set rather, and a kill for Boston College. So a look at Jason Kennedy, the sixth year head coach for these Eagles. How about that, seeking career win number 100. Wake Forest trying to answer and it's floated back into the corner for the Demon Deacons, point four to two in the first set. Ava Torrance in for the service. Back set. It's another big swing by Jensen. They'll go the opposite side this time. Too much pepper from Audrey Ross. And we're going to see a lot of this point-for-point -point volleyball today. These are two really similar teams in terms of physicality, so height, speed, et cetera, and really in terms of systems as well. Serve received. Good for Wake Forest, and it's another kill. That time Paige Crawford gets in on the action. We can see Ryan Baker snuck in there sub for Kylie Adams. I'm not sure if Ryan Baker is now going to play all the way around or if Adams will be her back row sub. Both of them very talented setters for the Deacons. Crawford a low-lying serve. Out for Ross again for BC. Long pass. A joust at the net one by Wake Forest as Ryan Baker comes up with it. And that's why it's nice to have an athletic 5'10 setter front row for your team. Let's take another look at that joust ball. So that pass is a little bit too tight, but because she's front row, really able to dominate it, and Haggerty just didn't have anything for it. Nice serve, tough to handle for Boston College. Farrell on the first pass up, and it's blocked at the net. That is something that BC does particularly well, is defending high up on the net. Absolutely, Wake Forest really needs to focus on either hitting high hands, getting some tools, or just finding the court, finding a way to get around the block. The senior Grace Penn serves for Boston College. And another one stuffed at the net. I do like that Wake Forest decided to run the play again. A lot of times after a player makes a mistake, they might not want the ball again. So it's really great to see Frankie being really aggressive for that set. 
Ross and Haggerty tag team for the Eagles again. A dump over for Wake Forest achieves the point. That's what I love. You can see such a difference with Wake Forest passing when she's front row. And take a look here at Coach Randy Smart, fifth season for Wake Forest. It's been uh, quite the turnaround, really. I mean, they're, they're just looking to improve. It's been year over year progress the past few seasons for the Demon Deacons. Eagles quick to answer with a point. But a win today would make Wake Forest nine and nine. It would give them their first 500 or better season since 2010. A tap over. Now Boston College. Jensen, not as much force on that one. How about that set? Up on the net, sending it back, and then the dump over. Ava Carney. Another reason why I love a front row setter. Because when they jump, it makes the middles jump with them and leaves a completely open net. But we can see here exactly what you're talking about with Wake Forest really trending up. Eight wins, nine losses in conference play this season. Again, just a few years ago, a one-win team in ACC play as service error gives the point in service back to BC. And it looks like Wake Forest is running a modified... 5-1 where they have basically one setter slot but they're having a different setter front row versus back row. Farrell goes back and gets it ahead. Carney keeps it in in the back corner. And as we've talked about Ava Carney especially for a freshman has made such an impact for the Deeps just being able to put the ball down in those clutch moments. Two-point advantage for Wake Forest in the first set. Carney on the serve. Back for Jensen of Boston College. Nice reflexes. Carney keeps it alive for the Demon Deacons. Now ahead. Back set. And Jensen gets it. Fantastic play by Pollock for Boston College. Yeah, forgive me. That's Jenna Pollock on that near side who checks out and gets a breather but helping improve the team's hitting percentage a little bit, that bumps them up to a 167 while Wake Forest is hitting a 385. And you'll notice throughout the duration of this game, although it's point for point volleyball, if your team now, it just updated, they're hitting a 231. Even if your team is hitting a 231, when the other team's hitting about a 400, you have to figure out a way to keep that ball off the floor. Emma Farrell in that left-handed serve. Keeps it alive for the Deacons. They volley over. Clean look. Jensen smokes it. And it's back into the wall. Let's take another look. You can see that ball just went through the block. A bit of a field goal, if you will. And normally, Emma Farrell, former freshman of the year, really takes care of that. Another block for Boston College, led by Audrey Ross, just a freshman on that outside for the Eagles, but a huge part of their success. And it looks like right now, whether Wake is running the slide or the nine, Boston College is really prepped, and that's probably something they went over in great detail in film. Right back at it, Paige Crawford, second kill for her. She averages over three per set. And so far, this game's been very, very equal. Both teams are hitting exactly a 267. And aside from Boston College's two digs, everything looks almost identical amongst the teams statistically. Ross gets it right back after the first pass and slams it down. Point for BC. And again, finding a way to even get a hand on that and slow that ball down is greatly going to help the Deeks just because of the range that Audrey Ross has. Credit Sophia Lambros with the assist. Top 10 all-time in assists for Boston College. Overpass, but BC can't get it over. And the point goes to Wake Forest. 
If I was the libero for Wake Forest, I would have had quite a sigh of relief. I always <laughs> loved when the overpasses weren't killed. Now here's Crawford on service for the Deacons. Up for Ross. Bit of a long swing, but it works out. And one thing with freshman Audrey Ross is she's 6'3", so she's really got great length to make improvements there at the net, slow the ball down, and then also offensively. And I like that Boston College is kind of running like a three outside rotation where they're putting Katrina Jensen on the right side, on the outside sometimes. They just have a lot of depth on those pins, and that's another block for Boston College. That's three now for Ross alone of the Eagles. And it gives them the lead here by one. Grace Penn, second time on service. Carney has it knocked right back. They'll go Carney again. Swipes it across the floor. Point, Wake Forest. Ava Carney already having quite a standout night. She gets the opportunity to get the ball again and kind of has some thumb down action, almost hitting the tee. And that's her third kill on six attempts. So she's hitting 500, which is very impressive. Tap over, good detection by Wake Forest. And there's the kill, Dior Charles, her first. I love, love that Wake Forest is still running behind the setter, even though it hasn't been overly efficient right now. Dior Charles really hasn't gotten to touch the ball out. That was her first attempt, and I like that they fed her to still get something moving back there. Long on the service. So 14 all here in set number one. We said it. This was going to be back and forth. Very competitive. Ross serves for Boston College. Oh, and a service ace for Ross, BC up 15 to 14, a timeout on the floor, set number one. Rated mature. When did you last really feel something beyond the extraordinary? Feel it now on PlayStation 5. PlayStation. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old, old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. System. Shark's most intelligent cordless yet. Detects hidden dirt and boosts power. Detects edges and doubles suction power. It even empties automatically. Shark Detect Pro. Clean smarter. First set. And Boston College ahead, 15 to 14. A look there at their season so far. This is a tale, Haley Brook, of a couple of teams who have had very different Novembers, right? <laughs> Boston College winners of three of their last four, including Syracuse at NC State. The Wolfpack bested them in Chestnut Hill. And then at Syracuse, a three to one victory over the Orange. Meanwhile, Wake Forest has been scuffling as of late. Absolutely. And it's tough because there's no ACC tournament. So there's no 
wild card. There's no way to get into the NCAA tournament by just having a fairy tale run in the postseason. So it can get a little bit unmotivating for teams to really stick it out through November. But Boston College has done a really great job, even notching a set off NC State, who's been really impressive this year. They had a huge upset against Wisconsin, a former NCAA champion. So it definitely just really goes to show their hard work throughout the entirety of the season. Each team with an unforced error. Now a clean set and the block there for Wake Forest that time. Charles and Carney combined forces. Love seeing that. We're gonna take another look here. Carney did a great job reading, big swing block. Her and Charles have their elbows over the net. Overpass, dumped down, inbounds. Looks like that was a productive timeout for Wake Forest. Coming out really hot here. They're in rotation one, so they have three hitters in the front, all of which who are hitting pretty efficiently, aside from a few blocks on Slater. Grace Penn with the set. No chance at a big swing for Boston College. Charles a touch over. Nice save by Farrell. And it's over the net in bounds. Third kill for Ashley Slater. Ashley Slater definitely heating up here. And that'll be a timeout for Boston College. So Slater receiving some instruction. It was 15-14 at the break. The Demon Deacons have gotten a few on Boston College here. And we'll look at Wake Forest's season so far. Again, we talked about it as of late, not playing their best, losers of five of their last six. It really, I feel like the decline started at that Carolina game. So they played Carolina at home. They were coming in with an RPI of 44 really needed to win that game and then proceed to win the rest of the games, which were all against opponents that they had beaten before. And you can see here that RPI up, got as high as 33. And since then, the one in five record really has caused that tremendous drop. And you might be thinking, well, 64 teams make it to the NCAA tournament. But you have to remember that there's different conference tournament winners, there's wild cards. So if your RPI is 64, really your best bet is to get a wild card bid to the NCAA tournament. And you mentioned earlier, Haley Brooks, sort of the, the, the motivating factors, and maybe it can be easy to let some go by the wayside. There's still a lot to play for if you're Wake Forest here, right? You can achieve Absolutely. that 500 record. You obviously can improve your resume with one last ditch effort. And it's your last game of the season. A lot, again, not a lot of the players in this lineup are seniors, but if you're Olivia Frankie, you're going to want to notch that win. Annabelle Daly, they have several seniors on this team who both contribute on and off the court that are going to want to get that final win. Nice play by Carney, but it goes out of bounds. Trying to save it. Point goes to Boston College. That draws it within one here in set number one. Brooklyn Yelland in for the first time today. On for service, the freshman from Laguna Beach, California. Barrel first touch, a setup, back row swing, goes out of bounds for Crawford, point BC. And Paige Crawford coming into this game had 689 kills. She's notched two more since then. So she's at 691, she's only nine kills away from joining Ashley Slater in the 700 club. Up for Carney, wow. A wide open space in that back corner and Carney slammed it down hard anyway. And that'll be her fourth kill. We're gonna take a look at that last swing. I mean, she only had maybe a handprint of line open and she's able to place the ball there. She just has incredible range. We've seen a lot from her arsenal tonight. Even though she just missed her serve, she's doing 
She's had a fantastic game so far. She's hitting 571. She's had two digs, one block. One of two people to get a block so far for the Demon Deacons today. And service error number three for Wake Forest as Slater again hammers it down. Slater also hitting very efficiently tonight, notching in her fourth kill on five attempts with only one error. Now it seems like her opportunities have been very clean, very within the system. Nice serve by Farrell. Jensen gets it over for Boston College. Here's Slater again. And it was hit out of bounds. Thought maybe it would have been tipped by a BC hand to go that direction. And it doesn't look like any of the coaches are moving towards that green card. As a reminder, coaches can do a video replay and see if maybe they disagree with the call. Too strong on the swing again for Crawford. Point to Boston College. I see Coach Randy Smart not too happy about that one. It does look like she's making a move towards the card, having a bit of a conversation with the down with the down ref. And it looks like she will pull the green card. So they're going to challenge whether or not there was a touch on that last kill. So as a reminder, you get two challenges until the fifth set where you get an additional challenge. If you challenge and you win your challenge, you were correct. You get your challenge back. It used to be win, lose, or draw, you lost your challenge. So we're going to take a couple of looks at this ball and see if we can see a touch. So that angle, I don't see a change in the trajectory of the ball. I didn't see any fingers move, but this might be a better angle. It looks like it just missed her hand, but the down rep will actually have significantly more angles than we do to look at as well. So they'll be going through each angle tediously to figure out because this is a big point here. This is really a game to five at this point. Yeah, that was Katrina Jensen up on the attempted block. I mean, if it did get a fingertip, it, it was ever so slight. Very minute. Looks like we're about to have a call here. And the call will stand. So Coach Randy Smart loses her challenge, which is a little unusual. I've covered a lot of her games. She's very strategic and very good with her challenges. And I like, she always asks the players and really trusts the players whether or not she should utilize that challenge. So kind of an uncharacteristic loss on that challenge there. Back to business, Boston College, the service ace. and that'll be a timeout for Wake Forest. But one thing I noticed, so Kalani Willick, number 19 for Wake Forest, is not playing today when she was a freshman for Wake Forest. She was one of the best defenders in the ACC. Emma Farrell came onto the scene and kind of slid into that libero spot, and they just play incredible defense in the backcourt together. But noticing that Ava Carney is having to fill in both that row on the front row as she normally does but now she's playing all the way around likely posing an additional challenge for the Deacons because already Willick is a really strong defender, a really strong passer and Wake Forest on average has about 70 more reception errors on the season than any of their opponents so already the serve receive at times can be a little bit of a struggle and so having someone back there like Willick would be really helpful. So I'm not sure necessarily the reasoning, but she's not coming to the game yet today. Yeah, it's fair of you to point out, especially given that Boston College up to has a couple of service aces in this first set. So it would be fair to say that that's the difference. Absolutely. I mean, statistically looking, Boston College is actually hitting a 217. Wake Forest is hitting a 259. So the offense is there. There's a pretty good spread. You have Slater with four kills, Carney with four kills, Crawford two, Ryan Baker actually with two, and then Frankie and Charles both coming in with one. It would be nice for Wake to establish the middle a little bit more, but they have pretty good variety. Up for Slater. Tough to handle. And Wake Forest brings it back within one. 
And that's what happens when the pass is executed. And now you'll see Ava Torrance coming in as a defensive specialist, which I think will bring a little bit of relief to that Wake Forest back line. And the graduate student began her collegiate volleyball career at Purdue. Torrance's serve. Short set, and that one was hammered for the kill, Cornelia Roach. Absolutely incredible dig. And love seeing Boston College establish the middle a little bit more. That's her first kill of the night, but certainly an impactful one. And you mentioned the dig. Brooklyn Yelland, great, great play to get that started. Up for Crawford. It's it over. Over to Jensen. She hammers it down. Jensen quietly in this match with three kills thus far. Able to self-sufficiently pass for herself. Kind of pulled Frankie over towards the setter with that pass and then was able to get the gap. And that's something that's really difficult for middles is getting to that ball late. When you're late like that, it's gonna give a huge gap to your defense and it's gonna make it really hard, especially with how competitive and how strong the ACC is for the diggers to really be able to be effective. Because again, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, one blocker versus one attacker, it really should go to the attacker each time. Timeout called by Wake Forest. We talked earlier about the first meeting between these two teams. BC, despite losing three sets to one, got the first from the Demon Deacons when they were the home team. That was 25-19. Then it was Wake Forest surging back, but in close sets, 25-22, 25-19, and 25-19 again. So this perhaps looking a lot like that earlier matchup between these two back on October 6th. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had some bonus volleyball today. I would really be surprised if either team had a sweep. And then looking at the side out percentage, Wake Forest is only siding out 58.3% of the time. Boston College, 66.7. And typically to win a set, you have to be a minimum of 61% side out. So again, Wake Forest needs to do a little bit of a better job getting that kill out of serve receive and scoring out of serve receive. Anna Murphy on the serve for Boston College. That was up for Frankie, floated over. And a net touch there. And it's just those little things, those little things that make the difference when it's 21 to 24 final score. Ava Carney with the service. Out for Audrey Ross, tucked in neatly on that backside. BC off to a one to nothing start. Ross has been so efficient for Boston College this year. Back to Anna Murphy of Boston College. Clean set up for Slater. She hits it long and it was tipped out. So Wake Forest with the point. They continue to hammer it over to Ashley Slater and she continues to deliver. I love seeing those tactical tools off the block and Boston College has done a great job blocking. So it's great if you can just get off their hands a little bit. Out for Ross, Carney with it on the back row for Wake Forest. Crawford a touch over, handled well. Jensen, too long, point Wake Forest. It's going to be good for Wake Forest to try to break away early. They broke away early last game, got a little ahead of themselves perhaps, and Boston College was able to squeeze back in. Couple floated passes, but the block for Wake Forest, Emma Agogar. And that's a really tough pass for Lambro, she's, although she's six foot, she's back row. So for her to kind of rescue that 
ball is going to be really difficult. Gogar, first action, first block. There she is again on the kill this time. A Gogar getting involved a little bit here in this second set. Didn't see her in the first, but Wake Forest has a lot of depth in that middle position between her, Charles, and Frankie. Farrell floating up those serves, and it leads to another Wake Forest point, this time via the block. Crawford there with a Gogar. Wake Forest really finding a remedy for Jensen, who is one of our players to watch for tonight. Emma Farrell put that one on the lower line. Up from Lambros, and the block attempt goes out of bounds, so BC gets it back. I loved, loved that play by Lambros because Wake Forest is jumping with the middle or tied into the middle a little bit because it's a tempoed outside set. And then she's really able, Ross is really able to just get in there and take a big swing. She's been incredibly efficient tonight. Five kills, two errors on 11 attempts, hitting 273. Crawford ahead, back row swing. Carney puts it into the net, point BC. I like that Wake Forest is trying to get Carney involved in the back row because typically it's Willick back there. So it's a good idea if you're gonna have Carney back there, why not use her offensively? But it's definitely something the Deacons haven't had to do very much this season. Grace Penn, the service ace, got up on the body of Crawford. Let's take another look at that. And that's really a perfect serve. In a perfect world, you want to serve to the outside hitter. It's gonna pin the setter. She's in rotation three, so she has to run all the way around. Slater stuffed as she tried to tap it over. Well covered by Boston College on the block. This is just a really tough rotation for Wake Forest to get stuck in. You can see Kylie Adams is on the left side of the court and has to run all the way across to the right side, which is going to skew the field of vision for her passers a bit. Adams out for Crawford, and Wake Forest gets service back. But that doesn't bother Crawford much as she notches her third kill to get her into the positives. She's now hitting a 125. You really want to be more so in that 250-ish range as a pin hitter. But the game is still... Still young. Torrance sends it into the net, so immediately they give service back to BC. Wake Forest will have a little bit of relief with Ross in the back row. She's been phenomenal tonight so far. A bit strong on the first pass. Crawford there to clean it up, though, as it's knocked out of bounds on the block attempt by BC. Only a few more kills until she's in that 700 club as just a sophomore. Got the ace there. Paige Crawford coming Boston. out here in set number two and she'll go back to serve another. Boston College having a few of their own aces, so it's nice to see Wake Forest answering back. Another one low lying. Murphy goes down and gets it. Awkward swing for BC, and System Carney gets it for Wake Forest. It looks like number six, Jenna Pollock, for Boston College was a little tricked. I think she thought it was going to the middle, and by the time she realized it was getting shot out to the outside, she was a little bit late. Looks like Wake Forest, the tempo of the set was a little bit faster. I'm not sure if they're going to try to consistently run it a little bit faster, but that seems to be adding difficulty for Boston College. And that kill will just hit the line. Elena Crabtree just barely squeezing that one in. So now Julia Haggerty serves for the Eagles. And that one very long. 
And in the ACC, more so than any other conference that I've covered, I see a lot of service errors. And it's, I mean, the ACC is one of the best conferences that I've worked with, but the reason that we see a lot of errors from the service line in the ACC is because of how aggressive they are. They really try to get an ace every time because if you just kick the ball over too easy, you're gonna have a play like that where the team's able to really side out. And I love seeing Boston College still make use of Ross in the back row. So right now, Wake Forest really has to worry about four total options since their setter's back row. Yeah, you talked about it as Wake Forest having some relief earlier. That has not really been the case. Carney touches over. Murphy second pass. And it's sent out. Point Wake Forest. A little high on the swing by Crabtree. Until that swing, she had no errors, hitting 600 with three kills, five attempts. So she's been very efficient. Boston College right now is very balanced with their kills. There's Ryan Baker on the service. Lambros up for Jensen, pushes over. Good swing by Carney. It hit the light and drops for the Wake Forest point. Wake Forest saved by the light. And we can see a subtle difference with Boston College with Katrina Jensen now hitting on the outside in this first rotation before switching to the right. Lambros up for Jensen, using her left to get it over. Slater, a tap over. Murphy can't dig it up. Right now, it looks like Boston College is just trying to run that outside hut ball a little too fast for Jensen. Boston College would probably be better off giving it a little bit of height so she can get a hand on it. She's had to tip the last two just because of the sheer speed. Lambros, Jensen. A lot of heat on that one. Great effort by Farrell laying out toward her bench. And that's what I love. That set had a little bit more height like we were just talking about. So she was really able to get a hand on the ball. And you can see Dior Charles was late on the block, not really putting up a lot, just a one-hand reach. Wake Forest needs to have a lot more discipline on the block in order to prohibit that. Slater, long pass out of bounds. Carney just had to get it over. Does a good job to do so. And then Ross on the outside points it for BC. Jensen and Ross in the front row at the same time is an absolutely lethal combination. The two of them tallying almost, or excuse me, over half of the team's kills right now. First pass for Farrell, short set. And Crabtree unable to get it over. Boston College now trailing. Wake Forest has been really digging out right now, even though it's not looking quite as crisp and clean as they normally look. Barney on the serve. Crabtree up for Lambros. Deflected at the net and it drops down. A little bit of a breakdown in communication. A five-point lead for Wake Forest, 15 to 10, trying to bounce back and take set number two. Senior Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you? Yeah, hey, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But this one's round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto! Red Bull gives you wings. This time of year, there's one workshop on everyone's mind. The one that spends the whole year making toys and gifts. The Home Depot Kids Workshop, teaching those who will one day build their own homes and communities that doing is a gift you can share with everyone. 
Happy holidays from the Home Depot. Students. Students of any age, from anywhere. Students in a new kind of classroom. Using our technology to power different ways of learning. Harnessing AI to plant new beginnings. So when minds grow, opportunities follow. In the second set here, Wake Forest, after dropping the first, hitting at a much better percentage. 417 with seven kills as they lead 15 to 10 as opposed to 258 in the first set. And they've really stifled Boston College's offense. So Boston College in that first set was extremely efficient. And now looking, they're hitting a zero percentage. And on average, opponents normally hit about a 213 against Wake Forest. So even below that average, and Carney commits one of the seven sins of serving, which is missing your serve after a timeout. So I always say that's a point for the coach. It's a tactical timeout when that happens. Fifth service error for Wake Forest. And the BC Libero Murphy with the serve. Up and down. Ferocious swing for Dior Charles. I love seeing her get more involved in that offense. That's only her fourth swing of the night, but her second kill, she's hitting 500, and the beauty of setting the middle is it draws the block to them so that the pins have more open net. Farrell lofts that high arcing serve again. BC not really able to do anything with it. Crawford over, Lambros up for Ross, rejected at the net. Second chance for BC, Ross. It's it long, Wake Forest, point. And I'm seeing a little bit of frustration from the Boston College side. It looks like Lambros was kind of running into Haggerty on that set. There was an out of system play. It really just looks like Boston College needs to tighten up those, those nuts and bolts. Up for, oh, and that one a tap over. Couple of chances there for Agogar. Very crafty with the second chance there. Pure reaction on that ball. Let's take a look. And you can use any body part. So it kind of hit the outside of her elbow, but in volleyball, you can kick it. You could sneeze and hit it over. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's a really nice find by Emma Farrell, by the way. Right place, right time to keep it in play. And you'll notice she's in the right place at the right time a lot. She does a great job reading the play. She's extremely athletic. She's extremely quick. And she's a great leader in the backcourt. Seven point lead set two for Wake Forest. Nice response after dropping the first set. Demon Deacons have bounced back on a day where Again, they've got plenty to play for. Absolutely. They just need to focus in on finishing this set. They're seven points away from tying up this game one to one. They don't want to let Boston College get any sort of good momentum going into that third set because after this second set is going to be the longest time between any sets. They're going to get a three minute break. The teams are going to kind of come together strategize, figure out what's working and what's not. Sometimes you see some personnel switches and substitutions. So Wake Forest needs to be locked in to go ahead and finish this set. And Boston College really, really needs to focus in on getting those good vibes and those good feelings going into that third set. It would be quite a tooth and nail claw to get to the finish line in this particular set. But if they're able to get into a nice groove, they're hitting negative 048 right now. That's negative 048. So they really just need to focus on basically practicing for this next set. That serve by Farrell has given BC all kinds of problems and a go guard there on the block again. Another 
big block for Wake Forest. And in this current set, Boston College has only gotten one. Wake Forest has gotten three, which was actually the exact inverse in that first set. Lambros up for Ross, another Slater that time. Her fifth error of this game. Ross not able to get through Slater's impressive block. Slater 6-2. And you can tell the antennas on the court go up to 10 feet, and she's pretty dang close. There's Boston College getting one back. That snapped a five consecutive point scoring run by Wake Forest. And I think most importantly, Haley Brook, it gets BC out of the rotation where Emma Farrell is offering those slow loopy serves. Although that goes out of bounds and Wake Forest gets the point. What I like about Emma Farrell's serve though is it's very strategic. She's trying to serve it to Haggerty, number 23 for Boston College, to cause a bit of a traffic jam. If your middle blocker is having to play serve receive, she's probably taken completely out of the offense, which again makes it really hard for your switches to happen, so a lot of times, it's not necessarily about the tempo of the serve, but more so about that placement. Farrell the dig, long on the pass, gives it right back to Boston College, and it's hammered down by Haggerty. That'll be her fourth kill of the night. Almost hitting 500. Let's take a look at that swing. A one-on-one -on -one situation, and she's able to turn it to Ava Torrance, and Torrance just not able to get a finger on it. Ross serving, almost too long on that first pass. Crawford zips it through. Crawford, as we mentioned before, only six kills away from her 700th kill, which again is quite a feat as a sophomore. Yeah. Some people don't <laughs> hit that in their lifetime at a university. Crawford on the serve. This is one of those traffic jams you alluded to earlier. Carney for Wake Forest. And it goes out long for BC. Point to the Demon Deacons. Love, love seeing that strategic short serve really throw Boston College off. And honestly, it's just very frustrating for a team once you're trapped in these traffic jams. One touch back and a block again. Wake Forest has become absolutely electric at the net, and that'll be set point. But let's take another look at that fifth block of this set. A one on one, excuse me, the sixth block of this set. A one on one situation. Set point for Wake Forest. Crawford serves short. Crawford. Digs in the back, Carney here, blocked down. Farrell tried to save it. Torrance comes flying in as well, but BC gets the point. And that was the first swing we've seen from Boston College's number two, Schroeder. It seems like Boston College is in kind of a rhythm of about four players that they're setting a lot, Haggerty, Crabtree, Jensen, and Ross. Not seeing a whole lot of other distribution another freshman who just got into the game Chandler Swanson wow and I have never seen that in the ACC a foot fault on the game point serve Shad's really pacing the attack for Wake Forest with some cameos here and there out of Paige Crawford as to be expected and Wake Forest gets the first point Dior Charles with the kill that's her third I love this rotation for Wake Forest that they rotate in right after that first point. In rotation three, starting off with Emma Farrell. Up from Lambros, and Jensen hammers it down for Boston College. So they're able to get the point on the first Emma Farrell serve there. 
I know that must have been a relief because they were starting to get picked apart a little bit in that second set with those short strategic serves. Allie Schroeder sends it long on the service. You mentioned late in that second set, Schroeder making her first appearance of the game as well as Chandler Swanson. A couple of freshmen with service errors. In the case of Swanson, that was the, the 25th point for Wake Forest to end set number two. Absolutely, and a lot of it comes down to nerves. These college athletes are still people. Rejected. The Gogar trying to get it for Wake Forest. There's that impressive block in the middle for BC. And we're seeing Julia Haggerty come back into the game for Boston College. She's tallied only three kills, but she's hitting 500, so she's been very, very efficient. Torrance, the first touch is Crawford, gets it back to the second level. Lambros, Murphy, Ross, gets it for BC. I love seeing that out of system set by Anna Murphy. Although she's the libero, she was behind the 10 foot line, so she used her hands. Obviously, the libero cannot set in front of the 10 foot line with their hands and have the player jump and attack. If that happens, the player has to stand and attack. But it's a lot easier for a hitter to hit a ball off of hands versus a platform set. Murphy on the serve, up for Crawford. That one sneaks in at the corner. Crawford climbing up five kills away from her 700th kill. I definitely think she'll get it. Especially now that no matter what, there's going to have to be four sets in this game minimum. Murphy, long on the pass, well handled at the net, and Ross slams it down. And She's got a team high nine kills. It's tough right now, you can see Wake Forest knows the setter's back row all the time for Boston College, so they don't necessarily have to worry about the dump, so they're just back in defense. But when that set is so quick, it can be difficult for them still sometimes to adjust accordingly. Baker up, and a Gogar gets it. It looks like it may have yeah. rolled off of her back. Yeah, I think that was it. It came right back and then was deflected off of Wake Forest, so that's a BC point. Yep. Yeah, got her, got her in the midsection. Out for Ross again. They are peppering it to her, and she is delivering for BC. Boston College coming out really hot right now, even though I would say this is probably your one of your better, if not your best, serve-receive lineup. You have Farrell covering the cluster of traffic and Ava Torrance in the middle. Baker up for Carney, and a long swing. And that'll be a net violation anyway. Yeah. I always That always made me feel a little bit better as a passer. If I shanked it, but the team was in the net anyway, they normally don't count the error on you. You're right, yeah, you can So you that. feel a little better. It's like, okay, no matter what, I wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> Emmy Agogar with the serve. Short set, and it sneaks over for Haggerty. So Boston College up three, bit of a response after that second set. And we have Schroeder in this second set as well. She notched 14 kills. Baker, what a short swing. set up at Dior. Whoo! Charles with the kill. But Hallie Schroeder notched 14 kills and 16 digs versus NC State. But she was not able to help out here on the block. Kind of caught in no man's land. You typically want to try to get two sets of hands up on those quick tempoed middle balls. Good adjustment by Haggerty in midair to get it over for Boston College. Eagles got to get it over. Dug up by Crawford, right at the net. Baker, Carney. What a That's touch. That's going to go out. Great touch by Anna Murphy. But not quite enough. Murphy only has 
six digs tonight. Emma Farrell notching in at seven. Little battle of the liberos today, and that'll be a miss serve for the Demon Deacons. And it looks like right now Boston College is just going through a lot of personnel change. We see a serving specialist coming in, Brooklyn, Yelland. And I think Boston College is really just trying to find that winning combination right now of what's going to work. Yellen serve, finds Farrell in the back row. Baker up for Charles and is rejected. Again, I think that personnel change is really helpful for Boston College because it's just something Wake Forest hasn't seen. Boston College has used 14 different players so far in this match. Wake Forest has used 10, which is pretty typical. Another one knocked down by Roach at the net for Boston College. Now Roach trying to dump it over, puts it into the net, point Wake Forest. Roach was really efficient until that swing. She's only had three attempts so far, and we see Ava Carney head to the back row, which is not fully ideal for the Deacons, who have her leading in kills right now with nine. Up for Roach. Carney with the dig there, though. Crawford sends it back and through everybody. Murphy could not straighten it out. Point Wake Forest. Absolutely great swing. And it looks like Boston College is actually leaving Yelland in just to give a little bit more defensive help, it seems like, here in this third set. Garney's serve was floating all the way back to the corner. Interesting movement on it. Eagles do a nice job just to get it over. Baker, back set, touched over by Slater, but again, it is sent right back by Boston College. Great block by Schroeder. The biggest thing with a free ball is you should typically score. You don't get a lot of free balls in the ACC, so sometimes you get a little too excited. So it's tough. You don't want to be tipping off of a free ball, unless it's strategic. Sophia Lambros now serving for Boston College. That first pass. Wake Forest makes okay of it. Really good opportunity and the point for Boston College. Great play by Boston College. And you'll see Lambros go back to serve as Boston College is now back in rotation one. Schroeder in the front row. Jensen up there as well as Minyard, another player who's been awfully quiet, or excuse me, not Minyard, as well as Roach, who's been great at the net tonight. Lambro snuck that one over. It was rejected, but out of bounds. So Wake Forest gets Lambros out of the serving rotation for BC, and they go into Emma Farrell serving for themselves. Wake Forest back to where they started here in the beginning of this tight third set. And you can see Willick is actually in. I know we talked earlier about her absence and what that means for the Deacons on the court. Crawford, clean look, overpass on the dig. Up Baker, Crawford smokes it into uh, Murphy's chest. And I love Ryan Baker's set on this ball because you'll notice Roach was too late and left a huge hole in the block. And that's tough. Yeah, she was looking for it to maybe go, go to a Gogar in the middle there. Jensen's got to get it over. Now another good look for Wake Forest and a Gogar there. That set was a little bit low, but for a veteran like a Gogar, that's not a problem. And that'll cause a timeout. The first one of this set for Boston College. Tied at 11 points per piece, per a piece in set number three. This weekend, say big at PetSmart. Get 50% off on holiday toys, treats, apparel, gear, and more. 
Plus, enjoy more great savings on our everyday pet essentials. Smart. Anything for pets. The all-new Shark Detect Pro Auto Empty System. Shark's most intelligent cordless yet. Detects hidden dirt and boosts power. Detects edges and doubles suction power. It even empties automatically. Shark Detect Pro. Clean smarter. As Senior Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you... Yeah, hey, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But this one's round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto! Red Bull gives you wings. Tied at a set apiece. Tied at 11 points each in set number three. Wake Forest to serve. Emma Farrell will do that. Not a lot of difference between these two teams right now, aside from the fact Boston College is currently hitting a 455 and Wake Forest is hitting a 263. Good look on the second chance overpass. Jensen makes Wake Forest pay. And that 455 hitting percentage just jumped up a little bit after that overpass. Allie Schroeder. Awkward first pass for Wake Forest. They get it over. Outside, Jensen trying to tap over. A Gogar all over it for Wake Forest. And then on the block, it goes out of bounds. So the point goes to BC. BC doing a great job with these new substitutions. Seems to be really giving them the new look that they needed to be efficient against Wake Forest, as Wake Forest doesn't really have as much depth as a whole for hitters. Lambros, the defense. back set. <laughs> Lambros, Roach's way. Short set that time. Again, Wake Forest reacted accordingly. Baker, back for Slater, and that's down. No, it's out of bounds. I thought that hit a BC player. Point. Goes to the Eagles. Let's take another look at what exactly happened. Wow. And that that'll was... cause a timeout for Randy Smart. Both teams, one to one timeout. And really, what's been point for point volleyball until now? That was incredible detection by Brooklyn Yelland on the backside for Boston College there. That's now a couple of those. Slater, when she's on that outside, on the far side, Haley Brooks, she, she likes to sort of go thumb down and, and spin it toward the line, if you will, right? Keep it a bit straight. Absolutely, and speaking of attacking, we can kind of see the hitting percentage by set. Boston College really had a difficult second set as Wake Forest really teed off. And then from there, here in this third set, it's kind of been an equalizer. Boston College now keeping the Deacons on their heels, and I think it really starts with that first pass. Wake Forest also seems to realize that as they pulled Willick in to kind of help out with those difficulties so that they're able to still be efficient. And Boston College really able to get really tons of players into the game. We're up to about 16 different players for that combination of six winners on the court. And it seems to be throwing Wake Forest off a little bit because you have to remember, Wake Forest, this is their last match. So they did all of their film. There's no game Friday that they have to play or anything like that. All of their film, all of their walkthroughs and all of that have been to play against those starters for Boston College. And so it can really throw, throw you off from your preparation when you start to see 
10 extra players that you really didn't expect to be in the game. And Schroeder's serve into the net. We call that point Randy Smart because she called the timeout. And here we have, I would say this is the best serve receive rotation for Boston College. You have Ross kind of pulled to the side from the front, only needing to take a sliver with two defensive specialists. Torrance targets Ross, Lambros up, and Jensen throws it down for the Eagles to get the point. And we'll see Julia Haggerty re-enter the game. She's hitting quite efficiently with a 600 hitting percentage, so she's done a great job drawing that Wake Forest block even when she doesn't get the ball. Torrance up for Baker, got it off of the net. Jensen, hard swing, dug up, up toward the net. Crawford deflected at the net. Now the back set, Ross had to readjust her feet. Crawford across, but out of bounds. And I think one thing that Boston College is doing a really great job of right now is being really good out of system. Just like on that swing that Ross took where she had to reposition her feet. She put it in. She put the ball towards the setter on the right side of the court and just made it a little bit more difficult for Wake Forest in remaining very low error. Baker up, a go guard down. Nice clean look for Wake Forest there. Draws it back within three. Let's take another look. Great pass. And one thing I love about Ryan Baker is she makes a one pass look like a two, a two pass look like a three. She really improves her offense. Crawford with the service ace. That's her second of the day. And a little bit of momentum picking up for Wake Forest. That gap is closing awfully quickly and we see another substitution for Boston College, Crabtree checking back into the game. They go right to Crabtree on the serve. Ross, Murphy's got to get it over. Torrance Baker, Carney, that's down. And if I was Wake Forest, I would continue to serve Crabtree. We were always taught, serve the sub. When somebody freshly comes into the court, make them play volleyball. Let's take a look at that. Really a split block. We could say there was a double block, but it was really a one-on-one -on -one block situation because of how late the middle blocker was. Crawford skips over the tape. Ross. Now Carney, touch with the left over. Ross, and it was touched out of bounds. Ross now leading the team with 11 kills. Jensen with 10, and then it's kind of a jump down to Haggerty with four, Crabtree with three, then one and one for Pollock and Roach. So Wake Forest really needs to buckle down on how they're going to prohibit those pins for Boston College from being efficient. Baker forward and a Gogar blocked by Haggerty. That's her sixth of the night. She has been all over the block for BC. But that's not even her career high, which is the craziest thing. She was able to notch 11 blocks against Duke. Farrell gets it over. Up, Haggerty with the kill. That's her fifth. Haggerty again. Hitting well over 600 at this point, and that's going to cause Randy Smart to take her second and final timeout of this third set. A four-point lead for Boston College, 19 to 15. And we talk about the blocking ability of Julia Haggerty. It's not new tonight, right? Second in the conference in blocks per set. Absolutely, she does a great job reading. Blocking is a lot about speed and agility, but it's also about being really smart and getting to the ball. And as a 6'2 junior, she has the size and the veteran capabilities to be able to be such a great defensive option for Boston College. And it's, again, partially 
Why Wake Forest in this current set is only hitting a 125 after hitting a 450 in that second set. You saw 10 blocks on the night for Boston College, a good blocking team. A bit above their average to this point in the season. Absolutely, and these players are going to be playing against one another for a long time. We were talking before the match. Wake Forest has eight underclassmen on their roster, many of which contribute, and Boston College has nine underclassmen. Again, many of which contribute. So this isn't the last we're going to see of a lot of these matchups. Well, the last timeout called by Randy Smart worked to Wake Forest's advantage, at least for a point. A service error came immediately afterward. That won't be the case here. Up for Carney. Great dig by Murphy. Keeps it alive. Ross sends it out, and the point goes to Wake Forest. Boston College none too happy about that call. And so that's going to be a challenge. As we mentioned before, you get two challenges. If there is a fifth set, you get an additional challenge. Coach Randy Smart lost one of her challenges earlier this match. This is Boston College's first challenge. So we'll be able to hopefully take a look and see a couple of angles to be able to make our own judgment here in the booth on what we think. So that initial ruling was ball out. And Boston College is saying that there was a touch. So let's take a look. I mean, that ball actually almost looked in. And what's nice is, if anything else is noticed wrong with the play, let's say the down, the down ref notices Wake Forest was in the net. It used to be, it doesn't matter. You have to actually call what was wrong. If there was any other problem, it was ignored. But now when they look, if there's any other problem, it can go in favor of the original team. So that call will stand. But that acted as a really great timeout for Boston College nonetheless. They only have one timeout left. So even though they've lost a challenge, at least they got a little bit of time to regroup here. One challenge left for each team. And now Megan Merrill in for the first time today. Defensive specialist, a senior, will serve for Wake Forest. Sends it long. Another service error for the Demon Deacons. That's number seven on the night. And that's really tough because she's coming in only for the purpose of being a serving specialist. So sometimes I have mixed feelings on that as a position just because of all the pressure with that. Ross gets it just over top of the net. Knocked out of bounds, last touch to Wake Forest. BC gets the point to make it a five-point lead. And again, even with Ross in the back row, there's no rest for the wicked because she's still been so efficient from the back line. And a service error for BC. So they also have seven now. And again, you really don't want to have any more than two errors per set. So they're a little bit ahead of schedule in terms of number of serve, service errors, excuse me. Crabtree digs up the Baker serve. And that is in for the kill by Sam Hoppus. And another subtle change from Wake Forest lineup. Kylie Adams, number nine, is no longer coming in for Ryan Baker for those back row setting rotations. It looks like Wake Forest offensively just needs just to have one setter right now to be a little bit more consistent. That's really the only drawback of having two setters is you're having two different kinds of sets, even if it's ever so slight. Too strong on the serve is Brooklyn Yelland. So again, you talked about the, the youth of both of these teams. BC utilizing a lot of freshmen in key spots here in this third set. 
Carney on service for Wake Forest. There's Hoppish again, and it's in. She just entered. She's got two kills just like that. And Wake Forest is not too happy about that set from Grace Penn. Saw a lot of players and coaches with their hands up in the two motion, indicating they thought it was a double, but it's a judgment call. And there's you can't challenge it. There's nothing you can really do when that happens. But Boston College needs to be careful here. They've had a lot of errors here in this last third of the set. Sophia Lambros with the service ace, some help from the net. And she is one of their better in that category. She actually is now one service ace away from tying the career mark at Boston College. Wow. Bit long on the pass. And it goes to BC. A fourth touch, Wake Forest knew that was coming and that is the set in point from bc they had a little bit in that first set but the last two sets hardly any and we'll see some distribution here early cornelio roach with the kill for boston college she's been not in very often in this match but she's been strong in the middle when she's been up there absolutely she's gotten three of the team's blocks so defensively she's making a lot of headway. Overpass Crawford and it slams down. Elena Crabtree with the kill. It's two nothing Boston College to begin this fourth set. And that's not the momentum that you want Boston College to be getting here early in this decisive set if you're Wake Forest. Sophia Lambros got a to touch top of the net again. Murphy back Crabtree hits it out. Point Wake Forest. That'll be Crabtree's third error of the night. And it looks like Boston College is maneuvering it so that she's going to receive on the right side to hopefully have less of a chance of having to pass. Up for Jensen, stuffed atop the net. That's a really tough set. That's what we would call a little bit of a trap set because it was floating towards the net off the hands of Lambros. Slater and Charles there for Wake Forest. Ava Carney again on the service. Overpass Baker up for Charles, tapped it over. Lambros up for Jensen, Farrell to dig. Baker out, Crawford, and it was touched out of bounds. You can see the coach ready with green, heart, green card in hand for a challenge, but I did see Crabtree indicate to her teammates right after that she did touch the ball off the net. So I'm not sure what the strategy would be on using the challenge this early in the set. But Boston College coaching staff does not look too happy. We're gonna take another look and see what the real call is. I think it looks like it went off Crabtree's right hand. You can kind of see how she closed her hand a little bit after contact, which when you're blocking and you're up and you're pressing, a lot of times you see that closed hand motion because they're trying to push the ball back down and funnel it back in. So I wouldn't be surprised if the call stood, but they have a lot more angles than we do. So they might be able to see it a little bit clearer than we can. You said something earlier, Haley Brook, about coaching staffs often listening to the player. I, I didn't, I didn't see the motioning of Crabtree like, like you said, but and it, it was contact. It was going to be the call. No, strange. The down rub actually <laughs> pointed the wrong way. He in the net is the call there. I'm not really sure who he thought was in the net. Well, and that again is an important distinction. When you when you play the challenge card, yes. you don't you're not challenging one specific thing, right? You can challenge a few. So we can see if she hit the net perhaps in her follow through. Oh, I think that might have been it. I I don't see anybody near the net, but interesting. That's High IQ volleyball challenge there, I guess. <laughs> That's what we'll chalk it up to. And Paige Crawford gets it right back for Wake Forest. 
it's been a tough night for Anna Murphy, only notching seven digs here up to this fourth set, libero for Boston College. Although she is third in all-time digs for Boston College, she has just under 1,700. Lambros up for Jensen. Oh, wow. Farrell, that just ricocheted off of Emma Farrell. Not a lot she could have done about it. That is very skillful, the dig. Lambros up for Ross. Nice touch by Baker to keep it alive. Lambros again, this time Ross. And that one is down for the point. Emma Farrell notching two digs in that rally. Absolutely phenomenal. Let's look at that first dig from Emma that just ricocheted over. And again, she's a sophomore. She was freshman defensive player of the year and has gotten multiple awards this year already. And I wouldn't be surprised if she got another defensive award. Awkward touches over and a set over top of Jensen. There's been a lot of weird timing things between Jensen and Lambros. Sometimes it just feels like the tempo is trying to get pushed too quick. And then Lambros overcompensates a little bit with a slower tempoed ball. But then Jensen was overcompensating to go for the faster tempoed ball. And it's been a little bit of a mess with the tempos. Lambros goes to Ross that time. Who gets the kill for Boston College. 5-4 the lead in the fourth set. And we'll see this double sub here. And it's been really point for point volleyball as a whole tonight. And one thing that Boston College might start to worry about a little bit is their number of subs. So you only have a limited number of subs per set in volleyball. And when you run that 6-2, you really run into issues with getting low on those substitutions. And another block for Boston College. And it looks like that was definitely Audrey Ross with her fifth of the night. Haggerty was right there with her. Those two have combined for 11 blocks. And that's tying her season high number of blocks. And that's another one. Hoppus that time for Boston College. Look, we said it at the beginning. This is a team that plays really well defensively up on the net. They lead it by three, leading two sets to one. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Hmm. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people. Ah, oh, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. The all-new Shark Detect Pro Auto Empty System. Shark's most intelligent cordless yet. Detects hidden dirt and boosts power. Detects edges and doubles suction power. It even empties automatically. Shark Detect Pro. Clean smarter. Students. Students of any age, from anywhere. Students in a new kind of classroom. Using our technology to power different ways of learning. Harnessing AI to plant new beginnings. So when minds grow, opportunities follow. A look at the team blocking for Boston College up two sets to one and leading in a set number four here at Wake Forest. Nearly two and a half per set. They've got 12 today. Julia Haggerty has eight. That's as many as Wake Forest has. And for the Demon Deacons, Haley Brooks, seven of their eight 
came in a singular set back in the second. Absolutely, which explains that second set, how that panned out, but in terms of distribution is really not helping them at this point in the game. Race pin on the service following the timeout. Ryan Baker out Crawford's way, and it is out of bounds. Boston College with the point. They lead by four. Boston College really pushing away right now. Looks like they're in rotation six. A Gogar off. Frankie back on for Wake Forest. Or excuse me, rotation four. Baker up, Frankie. Haggerty was all over it, top of the net. That one skips over the block. BC gets it over with Murphy. Baker, clean set over to Crawford, tried to tap over. Murphy up for Ross. Baker keeps it in, back row swing. Carney skips it over the net and out BC point. It's tough. There's very few free balls being given, but it seems like when Wake Forest is getting the free balls, I'm seeing a lot of tips. And theoretically, at least in the ACC, you want the other team to tip to you. It's an easy shot, everybody's fast, it's a big block, you're gonna have time to get there. So Wake Forest has to figure out how to get offensive production or how to get a great tip like so. And that'll bring Ava Carney back to the front row who has 10 kills right now for the Deacons, hitting 269. That was the 10th kill for Paige Crawford. She and Carney tied for the team lead. And gets the service ace. That's three for Crawford today. It's so nice whenever you can get a free point, especially after a 5-0 run by Boston College. Crawford too strong that time. Boston College bench having a lot of fun. They have quite a lot of synchronized cheers back there, I've noticed. Ross on the back row serving for Boston College. Back to Frankie. Murphy puts it up. Hoppus sneaks it through. Point Boston College. I'm always amazed. Emma Farrell still able to get a little bit of a touch on that ball and defensively you're always taught if you can touch it, you can dig it. Service error, Point Wake Forest and they'll go back to the serve. It'll be Frankie. A lot of service errors here today. I guess everybody's just really excited for Thanksgiving tomorrow. over for Haggerty. She's done that a couple of times, intentional or not. Back row, Ross sails it through. It was grazed by a Wake Forest hand. Just a really smart play by Boston College because you can see Olivia Frankie is in the back instead of Farrell. And typically with a back row attack, you're going to do three straight across in the back. You're not necessarily always going to line up in that typical perimeter defense, but it seems like without Farrell in the back, the defensive coordination just wasn't there. Farrell's first pass up for Baker. Charles hammered that and gets it for Wake Forest. Tough break for Anna Murphy. Fantastic dig. But everybody was so on their heels, ready to play defense. She just wasn't able to get any help. And Wake Forest here is back in rotation one. Ryan Baker in that one slot. Long pass, but a good one. Wow. Up and down, Roach with the kill for Boston College. And you'll notice for Wake Forest, Olivia Murphy. Oh, excuse me. Wow, look at that swing. Olivia Fish sneaking in there, not really able to put up any sort of hands on that block. Here's Baker to the outside. Carney gets it through. 
Carney absolutely jumping out of the gym much higher than her block. But theoretically, your approach jump should be higher than another player's block jump. But she looked like she was towering over them on that swing. She'll go back for Wake Forest service and get the ace. Baited Ross out in front, who we could not dig it up. Push-ups. I always see Annabelle Daly back there <laughs> getting her push-ups in for the aces and just overall raising the morale of the team. Tough assignment for BC out of bounds. Wake Forest with the point. And they're within two here. This is definitely a big moment for number 12, Olivia Fish, the 6'2 outside hitter from Seymour, Indiana. She snuck into this lineup here late in the game, hopefully to contribute for the Deeks. Crawford floors it for Wake Forest, and it's a one-point game. Crawford now tied for the highest number of kills for the Deacons right now on an out-of-system ball with a double block. And it's not by chance. She does a great job looking at the defense, but unfortunately, another missed serve. Again, a lot of those tonight, but it's a it's born out of the want to be aggressive. Yeah, nine service errors for both teams now. That's about to be a fifth set of service errors. Overpass was into the net. Lambros does a nice job watching it all the way. Here's Crawford, dug up by Murphy. Lambros out, Jensen, Farrell right there for Wake Forest. Lambros keeps it short for Roach. Murphy saves. Eagles clear it. Baker up. Charles sends it down. Another dig by Murphy. Murphy is on fire in this rally. Baker goes outside. Crawford! That'll do it. That will be Crawford's 12th kill. She's now leading the team. And she now has 701 kills in her career. Let's take a look at how she's just able to split the block and split the defense. Brings it within one. Wake Forest trying to force a fifth set. Farrell. Just barely gets it over the net. And the block attempt goes out of bounds. Hard swing by Jensen of BC. They go back up by two. Such a nice calculated serve by Farrell, but I feel like Boston College has kind of rhythmically gotten into the groove of dealing with those serves now. So they're probably better off just trying to pin those outsides to the, to the line so that they're kind of taken out of the offense. Oh, mistouched by Wake Forest, a service ace for Boston College. And you First of the day for Brooklyn Yellen. Still no move to put Willick in the game for Carney. Not sure if they'll push Ava Carney out of service Eve. Back set from Baker. Baker goes back again, and it's touched out of bounds. Wake Forest, Olivia Fish with the kill. Olivia Fish really finding a way to contribute into this game with her first kill for the Deacons today. And I really love that Coach Smart decided to put her in just to give a different look. Let the other team just see something a little bit different. Torrance finds Ross. The block rolled it over top of the tape. Ross again deflected. Farrell there. What a dig. Out for Crawford, second try. It's through. Wake Forest really starting to light up here in this decisive fourth set. Let's take a look at that dig. What a play by Brooklyn Yellen. Torrance on the service. 
Lambros up for Ross, and it's out of bounds. Wake Forest just tied it at 16. Wake Forest hitting zero percentage this game while Boston College is hitting a 312. But it really seems to be a little bit skewed because Wake Forest was in the negatives for the majority of this set. They've really heated up here. And I think it's going to come down to who's being the most aggressive at the net and who can pass. The serve receive has been a little bit streaky for the Deacons, especially without their typical defensive specialist, Willick in there in the back to kind of help relieve some of that tension. Although Ava Carney is an incredibly talented player, she doesn't normally play six rotation. So that's gonna make you a little extra tired. It's gonna make you a little, a little more locked in for a long period of time because now you have to focus on multiple skills. So I think it's gonna be really important for the Deacons to just focus on getting a great pass whether it's in transition, whether it's off the free ball, in serve receive, and keep mixing up the sets. Right now you have Paige Crawford with 27 attempts, Ava Carney 28. Then you have Slater 16, Dior Charles 10, Ogogar 11, and then Ryan Baker two attempts as the setter. So it has a pretty, they have a pretty good spread. Whereas you look at Boston College, there's two players the ball is going to get tossed to. 32 of those attempts have gone to Ross, 27 to Jensen, and then it's a huge dip. Nine for Roach, nine for Crabtree, seven for Haggerty, and then just straggling balls. So I think the biggest thing is Boston College is going to need to bring in a little bit more diversity in those sets, especially right now in rotation three. It's gonna be a tough run. There's a lot of traffic jams that can happen here. Lambros for Ross. Farrell there for Wake Forest. Baker out. Crawford sends it out. And Boston College grabs hold of another lead, 17-16. Grace Penn to serve. The dig by Farrell, Wake Forest gets it over. Up for Haggerty, there's that touch over. The body control that she has displayed a few times on a touch like that, it's really the first one she's gotten to fall for a point. The Midas touch, you might say. Boston College up two. Murphy out for Ross. She tried to push it into the back, and there's Paige Crawford. What a swing. Crawford's hitting percentage, slowly crawling up with her 12th kill. Wake Forest really able to execute on that free ball, and she has such a nice little thumb down swing that seems to always find its way around the defense. And a service error for Paige Crawford, who has been so good with service today. But Wake Forest might find a little relief here. Libero's out for this play. You have a middle in the back. They might be able to capitalize. Awkward first touch for Farrell. Wake Forest recovers. Oh, Haggerty was right there over top of the net for the block. Carney. That's dug up. Ross pushes over. Baker, back, Frankie, out of bounds. Fantastic Boston. push for Boston College here. It's really a game to five. And that's going to be a challenge, it looks like for the Deeks. Yeah, one remaining challenge for each of these teams. This so, will be the last challenge for Wake Forest. We'll take a look here soon to kind of see what exactly might be challenged. But a lot of times coaches towards the end of a game, especially here where it's do or die for Wake Forest, 
sometimes we see coaches just take challenges as an additional timeout just to get everybody regrouped. So we can kind of see both huddles going through what they'll be doing no matter the outcome of this challenge. And if you're Wake Forest, you're likely going to be on serve receive. So you need to be talking about if it's a good pass, what plays are we going to be running? If it's a not so great pass, what plays do we plan on running? And how can we hopefully score out of serve receive? So may maybe a touch there, Elena Crabtree, number 11 for Boston College was up nearest. Definitely don't think there was a touch based on these angles, but I will say the down ref, he's doing his due diligence, taking his time looking at all the angles. So we might see a Wake Forest point here, but Boston College, Coach Smart looks a little baffled by this call here. But we didn't see the touch either. I didn't see it live. I didn't see it on the replay. But nonetheless, I think this really gives Wake Forest an opportunity to regroup. You have Ryan Baker front row. You have Olivia Frankie. And then you also have Ava Carney. Paige Crawford in the back. Hasn't been ultra efficient with swings in the back. But it looks like, again, Wake Forest doing a good job icing the serve. That's another thing. Another point, Randy Smart. And Wake Forest is back within two. You don't want to miss those serves after the break. So we have Kendall Phillips, a 5'5 junior DS from Virginia Beach, coming in in the serving specialist role for the Deacons. We saw Meg Merrill earlier this game, but she struggled a little bit with the serve. And it looks like same thing with Kendall Phillips. It can be really difficult to come in just for a serve and then get subbed out. There's a lot of pressure involved with that, which makes it difficult sometimes. But we'll see, this is again, one of the better back lines that we'll see for the Deacons in terms of serve receive, but you really wanna try to get a defensive specialist in the middle, if at all possible. Farrell, high first pass. Baker up for Carney. She put it into the net. Point Boston College, and they're just three points away from closing this thing out. And that's only Ava Carney's fourth error on swings of this match. So kind of unfortunate timing, and that'll be Randy Smart's second and only timeout, or only timeout left of this set. But there's still a lot of game to be played. If Wake Forest is able to side out, it'll be 19-22. Maybe get a nice little run, one or two points, make it 21-ish, 22-ish before they have Boston College side out again, and then just point for point volleyball. And you hope a couple of things go your way. So the Deacons aren't necessarily out of it, but they are only hitting a 0-28 this set, while Boston College is hitting a 2-31 which makes it really, really difficult for the Deacons to remain impactful. And over with Boston College, so many players with just fantastic stats right now. You have Julia Haggerty hitting 625 out of the middle, doing a great job drawing the block. Samantha Hops hitting 600. Cornelia Roach, 300. Yeah, and it's those players that Boston College has, has just slyly rotated into the game, whereas we talked about the workload. The majority of that has belonged to Audrey Ross and Katrina Jensen, but they've slid these others in for fewer fewer swings, but they've been very efficient, right? And that's that's a, that's been a, a huge factor for the Eagles. Absolutely, and you can tell Wake Forest hasn't really been able to figure out a remedy to actually block Boston College. They have one block in this current set, eight in the entire match, and seven of those were in that second set that Wake Forest was able to tally off of Boston College. Baker again goes to Carney. It skips over the tape and is out of bounds. Boston College's point. Carney looking a little tired. Those last two errors, she hit the ball on her way down and she might just be having a toll taken on her playing six rotations today. 
Murphy serves. Crawford the dig. That goes out of bounds. Couple of awkward touches, and now Boston College with a match point. Unfortunately, seeing a huge breakdown in several aspects of the game. We have Ava Carney pushing back to put Paige Crawford out of serve receive so that maybe Ava Torrens can take that ball instead. But not much of a better result here. Crabtree pushes into the air. And a block for Wake Forest keeps the Demon Deacons in it. And I really love seeing Ava Carney after that play pumping up her teammates, making it a point to talk to almost every person on the court. That's great leadership, especially for a freshman. And we quietly see Olivia Fish check in. Again, the 6'2 outside hitter freshman playing right side today. High second pass, Crabtree right to Farrell. Baker out, Carney. And that skips through the backside. Ava Carney making this game really exciting right now. It's really, can Wake Forest get five points before Boston College can get one? But even if they're just able to tie it up at 24 all, we might be into some extended points tonight. Out for Crabtree, and that is match point for Boston College, not without a fight from Wake Forest. They mirror the three sets to one score from over a month ago, the last time these two teams met, it was three to one Wake Forest. And in the Demon Deacons final game of the regular season, the Eagles take it three sets to one themselves. A fantastic win for Boston College.